Iconic series asked for iconic game fives, and the one in Oaka was an all timer. 12 years of Panathinaikos pain ended in stunning fashion. We saw Kendrick Nunn and his heroics in the fourth quarter, unexpected X Factor stepping up late, and clips of maid dunks, and a full gym singing one hour prior to tip off going viral. <laughs> In this video, I'm going to break down of how Ergin Ataman and Panathinaikos fulfilled their promise and advanced to the final four. First and foremost, the biggest respect goes to Maccabi. They pushed Pau to their limits with Wade Baldwin sidelined for most of the series. Even game 5 was a super close one, but how did they do it? Well, they knew the weaker spots of Pau and pressured them with a purpose. And yes, I'm talking about Nunn's defense. Here's a pin down and a handoff for Bartolomeo, but the point guard is late to react, slow to navigate the screens, and it gets Maccabi going early. With him and Slukas taking such a huge offensive role, they couldn't perform great defensively and Maccabi understood it early. Here, Nunn forgets to box out and that gives Maccabi a second chance. Later, he finds himself on Jake Cohen on the weak side and gets caught ball watching when Brown plays one on one. And of course, a smart player like Jake Cohen capitalizes on it. Here is a third example from the first half. On this sideline out of bounds play, Bartolomeo cuts after inbounding the ball. Nebo then changes the angle of this pick and it opens up a drive for Brown. But it's all good with Grant on his hip and Mitoglu under the basket, right? It technically is, but none stops to help from strong side one pass away and it's an easy shot one more time. Another pain point Odette Katash was pressuring was Lazort's pick and roll defense. Against this empty corner action, he's dropping back but also looking to slap the ball away. Brown drops it off to Nebo and the big man and demonstrates his progress as he consistently made this floater throughout this series. A bit later, Josh got a wide open dunk too, as Grant got screened very well, Lazor spent a little too much time on the ball, and the weak side was concerned with Bonzi Colson. and Josh Nebo. The Texan tornado will tear through the Athens air. So Maccabi had a great start, leading 18 to 11 thanks to a clean execution offensively. It's another early pick, and all other Maccabi players are low. That means stunts are not available, and that allows Brown to get inside and make this floater with Lazor retreating back. Lorenzo was playing on an MVP level in this series, carrying Maccabi on his back. Spain pick and roll from Maccabi, and check how masterfully and slowly he's getting deep into the painted area, waiting for Nebo to roll and Lazor to commit, only to drop it off a moment later. Incredible work. But enough about Maccabi, because Panathinaikos came back pretty quickly. Maccabi used a lot of different defensive coverages in this series, but here they are switching. Nunn has James Webb in front, sees him backing down, pulls up as he starts his own personal show. In the next clip, Maccabi triple switch on this empty side action, which eliminates Lazor versus Brown mismatch. But the Frenchman still has a way leaner James Webb against him. Nebo's protecting the rim instincts makes him over help from one pass away, nobody's ready to rotate, and Grant joins the party. Then a really funny and tactically interesting moment happened after. To start the second quarter, Pao ran a special after timeout play that's not usually in their playbook. Kendrick sets a ram screen, Slukas and Lazor play the two-man game, Game, and then Nunn has a corner exit ready. That's a great way to occupy the help defense. Blatt is lost, Rivero doesn't react and help his teammate by switching and that's a free. And he makes McCarthy pay from the perimeter. The funny part is that this play is an exact copy of what Odette Katash and Maccabi had been running the whole season. And that's not a shade on Eric and Ataman, because every coach steals and copies plays from one another. I thought it was just funny that he used the one play that Maccabi know perfectly well, yet they couldn't guard it, just as Pau couldn't get a stop against it for two times in a row in earlier games of the series. So Pau coaching staff might have stolen a play 
away from Maccabi, but you can create a unique website using this video sponsor, Hostinger. With their AI website builder, it is incredibly easy to fulfill your dreams. Whether that's an online shop, a blog, or your own portfolio, your idea can become a reality in 10 minutes and you don't need to hire four people to execute the idea. You can choose from 150 templates Hostinger is offering or ask the AI builder to make a unique one for you. In case of emergency, you can even manage everything on your phone. So what are you waiting for? Go execute that long time idea of yours and grab an additional 10% discount with our code BNEWS10. Okay, so another important part of this game 5 was matchup zone defense played by Maccabi. They did it to throw Panathinaikos away from their rhythm and break the set but the Greeks found answers. And this is where Kostas Lucas came into the picture. Maccabi switched in this matchup zone as the clock ticked, and that's some more ISO heroics from the two-headed Pao monster. Later, we witness another switch after Pao have passed the ball a couple of times, and here comes a pattern shot fake from Slukas that gets Rivero in the air, and he's gone. Other times, when both teams played their individual man-to-man -man defense, it was like watching that Spider-Man meme. It was about putting two on the ball and looking which role players can make more shots. Lazor is high, Papa Petru is on the single tag side, so Coulson is open and he connects. A similar play on the other side of the court. Slukas gets inside, Rivero and Brown are concerned about him, that's why Webb has to help, and Papa Petru responds to Bonzi with a free on his own. I have to say more about Papa Petru here, he was a huge X factor in this series. Not knocking down these exact spot-up shots when his teammates drew most of the attention. In the second half, we see another top pick with none and here's where things get complicated. Lazor sets a flat screen and Kendrick logically goes to the one side without Nebo. That forces Lorenzo to help off of Slukas, but the problem is that there is nobody in behind to help him. Maccabi have been stunning the ball handler the entire series, but because Mitoglu just cleaned the right sides, Lucas is wide open and he swishes it. But of course, Lorenzo Brown was quick to respond. Once again, he gets the better of none defensively as he rejects this pick. Four power players are in the pain because of that. And once again, it's John Di Bartolomeo collecting the rewards. Di Bartolomeo, the Maccabi captain. Maccabi were playing at an insane level and this clip is another proof. It's a stagger for Cleveland only for him to slip the screen and get a lob dunk, with the weak side defender occupied by defending a pin down. But Pao don't repeat the same mistake twice as they already allowed a huge dunk in the same action earlier in the series. However, the guests flow into a pick and roll with Rivero, Nunn is slow getting around the screen once again, and Maccabi are in the game with 12 minutes to go. Enter Kalaidzakis and this is where the series changed. I actually can't believe a game 5 was influenced so much by the 12th player in the rotation, but I guess this is why basketball is beautiful. Watch him make Lorenzo work for every meter on the court and then a beautiful defensive sequence by the whole team. Motivated by Kalaidzakis' example, Juancho is on the time with his rotation, Grioni sprints all the way across from the other side to prevent Webb's free pointer Juancho then peel switches and all of that forces Nebo to shoot a shot he's definitely not the most comfortable with. In the next possession, Brown wants to go into the post against Kalaidzakis, but not only the Greek forces him out of it, but he also steals the ball when he wants to reject the pick later. Talk about differences in on-ball defense between Nunn and Kalaidzakis, who can use all the energy in this world for a couple of minutes. Seeing this, Maccabi decide to put Lorenzo off the ball for the next possession and involve none, even if it means Tamir Blatt is with the basketball. And I don't know if Kalaidzakis inspired none or what, but look how active his hands are, deflecting the pass, and it's the X factor of the fourth quarter reaping the benefits. Kalaidzakis opens his long stride. 
wide and throws it down. All of this set up the scene for the man of the night. Kendrick Nunn. First, on this paint we can roll Maccabi miscommunicate. Nebo and Bartolomeo both are on Nunn instead of a simple switch. That leaves Papa Petru 5 meters of space. At this point the guests are simply doing anything they can and the ball finds its way back to the one person you don't want it the most if you are a Maccabi player. Now up 7 with 4 minutes remaining, it's another screen for Kendrick. But the first one is super high up and Blood goes under. The easy counter is a rescreen and all of this movement finds Rivero a bit too far away from the pick or should I say Kendrick Nunn is just too good as he pulls up from NBA free point line. So now he's simply feeling it and the whole Oaka knows he's taking the next shot. Tamir Blatt tries to intimidate him by picking him up full court but he slowly goes all the way, Cohen gets beaten too easily and that's a lovely touch going above Josh Nebo. Up 9 with a minute to go and all the fans celebrating already, all what was missing was a final dagger. Now so late in the game Maccabi switch but decide not to double. The man of the night just sizes up Nebo who is not putting any pressure with 5 seconds to go and this sends Owaka into a frenzy. So this is how Panathinaikos advanced to the final four after seven in a row unsuccessful quarterfinal appearances. Which player or action impressed you the most? Let's discuss it in the comment section down below, don't forget to drop a like and also check out the Basket News merch that includes the sweater I'm wearing right now at shop.basketnews.com. See you in the next one.